in our line or four personal life. So much now qualified in Vedanta. So much qualified in Srimad Bhagavad. If you see any angle of up the eye, or you can see the old complete. There are so many arts.
Bimal Pashad, um, he was, the Lord Jagna, he's, the car stopped outside the house of Batu no Takor for three days. And the mother of Bimal Prashad, um, Shimati Bhagavati Devi Dasi, she brought the little baby out. And the garland of Lord Jagna, it fell on and garlanded um, little Bhimo Prashad. Stated that when he appeared, that astrologer um, stated that he had qualities of a Mahapurush. Mahapurush means greatly liberated person descending from the spiritual world. That not only did he have said that in Mahapurush that there are 32 symptoms of Mahapurush, but not only did he um, have um, some of these qualities, eight of these qualities, or 16 of these qualities, but he had all 32 qualities of a Mahapurush. And from very young, then he started to manifest qualities of a greatly liberated soul and great charity. When he was about two years old, then um, some fruit was brought into the house. And spontaneously, just as um, Raghav Pandit Pramuk, his child, will spontaneously go for things that he's going to the bell right now. <laughs> so little Bhima Prasad spontaneously he went for mango and went to take mango. And immediately Shilabhakti no Thakur, he stopped him and he said no. That actually this mango has not yet been offered to Giri Hari. So why are you taking that which has not been offered? You should not do this. And though he was only a small boy, less than four years of age, then immediately from that point he, vow, he took the vow that he would never take a uh, mango again. So such determination. We see that sometimes we may make some determination that we may not take um, some food which has been cooked by um, non-devotees and often we may make that determination that after some months we're traveling, then we eat crisp and this and that and so many things. But he made this determination when he was about two or three years old, and for the rest of life, he would never take it. Swamiji, okay. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, he would often comment that even when the disciples of Srila Prabhupada would offer him um, mango, then he would not accept it. He would say, no, that I have, that I have made offense in this regard, and he would not take it. So, um, as he grew up, he was trained by his father. Actually, he was a Shrutidam. Shrutidam means that he had such great memory that whatever he heard, he would never forget. And not only would he not forget, but he had perfect ability to be able to present whatever scripture he read according to perfect Siddhanta. How long should I speak? So he, um, so he, he, um, for instance, by the time he was six, seven years of age, he memorized all Bhagavad Gita. Not only did he have perfect memory of Bhagavad Gita, but he was able to speak Bhagavad Gita in any audience with um, perfect knowledge of all Siddhanta. It stated that even in learning English, that he learned English just by reading the Oxford Dictionary. So his English was so high class that to understand him, um, his English even, an English person could not understand that it was of such a high caliber. And when he spoke Sedant, um, I've heard it said that when he would speak, um, give discourses, that the Sedant was so powerful and so high caliber that all the disciples would have to go and hear from another disciple to explain what it is that the Guru Maharaj had explained. Though his disciples were so high quality, many of his disciples, just as when a great liberated soul descends from the spiritual sky, then 
Along with him, associates will come. As Krishna, when Krishna comes, Krishna does not come by himself. But he comes with so many different, with his associates, just as we are hearing before, that before Krishna came, then Balaram he came and prepared the way. So similarly, when these great personalities, they come, then they come with the associates, who um, are sitters in their own right. So, um, as he grew up, he showed his great knowledge, um, his great intellect, by being very erudite in, in, in school, even though he never really studied his schoolwork. Rather, he would always keep with him books of Naratan Das Thakur, like Prem Bhakti Chandrika, Pratana, and whatever time he had, he would absorb himself in the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He said that he did not want to waste time in, in these different materialistic studies, but rather that his sole object in life was to be one-pointed towards the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, so, he also, he was very proficient, he went to um, college in, I think, was it in Calcutta? And he was very proficient in astrology and also Sanskrit. And he, for his proficiency in astrology, he, refi he re received the title um, Siddhanta Sarasvati. But after some time, he gave up his um, education. Though he was, as I mentioned before, he was um, so erudite. Because he said he, that if he um, showed so much scholarship in school and became so um, um, accomplished in his studies, that then this would take away from his um, devotion life. So he left, he left um, school and he absorbed him, he, he thought that better he would absorb himself in um, his devotion life and, and bhajan. So there are many different pastimes that went on with um, Srila Bhakti Santa Prabhupada. So I will just touch on a few. He was the, um, his father, Srila Bhakti Santa he trained him in his publishing work. So he became expert in all different aspects of publishing, editing, and even writing. One example was that um, there was some dispute between smart Brahmins and um, Vaishnavas because the smart Brahmins, they were saying that unless one was born a Brahmin, then he had no um, right to worship the deity. And also, they said that even if one um, was transcendently situated, that if he wasn't born a Brahmin, then he could not be guru. So, they, they set a date for, um, for a discussion to be held on this subject. And it was expected that Srila Bhakti no Thakur, that he would go. But during this time, Srila Bhakti no Thakur, he became very, very ill, and he wasn't able to go. And he was, Srila Bhakti no Thakur was so um, outraged by the situation, that he would loudly exclaim that is there any, isn't there anybody who will be able to um, present the proper siddhanta, the proper teachings? And hearing this, then um, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada, um, then he wrote a paper in which, uh, I forget the name of the paper. Anyway, the paper, he had different categories. First of all, he explained what is a Brahman. And then he glorified the virtues of a Brahmin. And then he, after he explained what is, Vaish, what is a Vaishnava, and explained um, how a Vaishnava is superior to a Brahmin, and that a Vaishnava, just as Srila Sanat Goswami had explained, that just as um, bell metal can be turned into gold by an alchemical process, that similarly, even though one may not be born a Brahmin, but if he has taken proper diksha, um, from a bona fide spiritual master and undergone the process of diksha and become um, fully fixed in Sambandha Gyan that he is actually a Vaishnava and much superior than just a Brahmin. So when he presented this paper to Srila Bhakti Nautakor, Srila Bhakti Nautakor, he became very, very happy and gave him his blessings 
And then we went to this um, assembly of um, pundits and Vaishnavas. So to make a long story short, um, the Brahmanas, they presented their arguments, and then when Shri Bhakti Siddhanta, he started to present his arguments. His arguments were so powerful and irrefutable that after three days of debate, um, the smarter Brahmanas, they could not say anything. And there was a very big crowd, there were thousands of people who came to this assembly to, to witness. And after, they became so hysterical, seeing that an Acharya had emerged, that they started to um, storm to get the dust of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's um, lotus feet. So the police who were there to protect him, then they forcibly, they picked up Srila Prabhupada, and then they put his feet in a big vat of water. Uh, even though Srila Prabhupada had, had a vow that he would not accept, he, would, he did not want anybody, he did not allow people to touch his lotus feet. And even when anybody came to offer him obeisances, he would return the obeisances. Even after he had thousands of disciples who would always um, um, address his disciples as, as Prabhu. So in this situation, they forcibly, against his will, they picked him up. And he was a very big person. They picked him up and then they put his feet in the back. And, and then they allowed the upsurging crowd of um, um, thousands of people to come and they took the water from his lotus feet and in this way they were pacified. So, also um, explain that when he was, I think when he was in, in his teens or early twenties, that one time he had a debate with um, one Shastriji who was very, very renowned and expert I think this was just in astrology. But even though he was still just a, 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 young, a youngster, and a student actually, and he was debating with this Shastriji, he defeated him so profoundly that the person passed in his pants and had to work away. So in this way, he would travel. After some time, he, he traveled all over India, preaching the um, doctrines of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he became and he was so powerful and um, indefeatable that um, when others, opposing elements would come across him, then they would, they would run away. He was known as the Shinga Guru. Um, then the pastimes of um, when he took initiation from Srila Gorofi Shodas Babaji Maharaj to explain that after um, Srila Bhakti no Thakur, he had established Sonanda Sukhada Kund in, um, on the other side of the um, Ganges and the other rivers, um, Salzbat, Jalangi, on the other side of the Jalangi um, River. Then um, one Paramahamsa Sadhu, he came from Vrindavan. His name was Srila Gopi Shodas Babaji Maharaj. And he was renowned and very, very renounced. He had, practically speaking, he had no possessions but his Japa Mala. Um, and he had um, um, just very few possessions. And upon meeting um, Srila Prabhupada, then he, he was um, immediately, there was this um, spontaneous attraction between the two. And he gave him some knots of um, was a rope that um, he used to use for that he gave him for chanting for chanting japa. So Shilabhakti Siddhanta Prabhupada he was very fortunate that in this place he was sometime here discussing discourses um, which included Srila Gokisho Das Babaji Maharaj, Srila Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj and Srila Bhakti Thakur. And in due course of time then Srila Bhakti Thakur, he inspired him, encouraged him that he should, he should go and he should take Diksha from Srila Gorki Shodas Bhakti Maharaj. But upon going to Srila Gorki Shodas Bhakti Maharaj, Srila Gorki Shodas Bhakti Maharaj had, had made the vow that he would not accept any disciples. And when he went, Srila Gorki Shodas Bhakti Maharaj said, Why are you coming to me? Uh, that you are um, such an erudite scholar. And already Srila Gorki Shodas Bhakti Maharaj had so much. Um, 
honor for Shilabak to know Taiko and for Shilabak to sit down to Prabhupada. He said, you're such, coming from such an aristocratic family, because Shilabak to sit down to, he came in lineage from um, Narutam Das Taiko. And he said, you're so learned, you have the title Sarasvati Taiko, and practically speaking, I am illiterate. But because Shilabakti Siddhanta, he was not an ordinary soul. An ordinary soul would not be able to differentiate between whose Sulgurde was just explained two days ago. That Kanishta or Majam Kanishta will not be able to differentiate between whose Uttam, whose Majam, and whose Kanishta. And in this way, there might even be some offenses made, or one may honor somebody who is a Kanishta as a Uttam, Adhikari. But Shilabakti Siddhanta, knowing and also being inspired by his father, then he was persistent, but in his heart he knew, because he could differentiate who was, what was the um, level of Srila Gorki Shodas Babaji Maharaj. And he begged him for initiation. And Srila Gorki Shodas Babaji Maharaj, he said that first I have to ask Mahaprabhu, and if Mahaprabhu wills. So then we can understand that what kind of person can have direct contact with Mahaprabhu, and that when Mahaprabhu tells him, then he will uh, reply if he can give initiation or not. By this we can understand what is the position of Srila Gorki Shodas Babaji Maharaj. So then, Srila Prabhupada, he went about two or three times, and each time Srila Gorki Shodas Babaji Maharaj said, No, um, I actually, I forgot to ask Mahaprabhu. And then finally, exasperated, and by this time, Srila Bhakti Thakur, he was also, um, he spoke on his behalf to Srila Gorki Shodas Babaji Maharaj, that please, um, be merciful to him. Because if you're not merciful to him, then he will give up his life. He cannot maintain his life like this. During this time, practically, he had stopped eating. Uh, he was in such a state. And finally, he just broke down crying at the lotus feet of Gorky Shodas Babaji Maharaj. And um, he said that if you do not accept me, then I will give up my life. So seeing the determination of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta this way, showing how to approach Guru that the tendency is that because Guru is so merciful, what have we done? Srila Gurudev is coming and he's, he's traveling all over the world. What effort are we making? And rather he's pleading with us. But actually it's stated in Shashva that one should approach Guru in such a desperate mood as if one is, one's head is on fire and that one needs the mercy of the cooling um, effect of the lotus feet of Guru to put out this fire of material existence. So in this way, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, Though he's a Mahapurush, a liberated soul, an eternal associate of the Lord, but still he's showing how he's crying, and he's at the point that he's ready to give up his life if he does not get this mercy of Diksha from his Guru. So this melted the heart of Sri Gopisha, Kishore Das Babaji Maharaj. Already his heart was melted, but to the effect, to the point that he consented to give him Diksha. And, and so he asked him to go and take bath, in the Ganges, and when he came, then he initiated him. Um, the name was Vasha Banavi Devi Daita. That's so. Um, there are many other pastimes, but I think there are many other Vaishnavas much more qualified than um, realized. And also, Srila Rude will speak, so time is. Limited. It's already almost 12 o'clock, so I'll stop.
I was speaking with Keshav, Krishna Keshav Brahmachari, one of the Islam Sarasvati Thakur's disciples in Jagannath Puri. He related a story to me that I hadn't heard before. So there's so many stories to tell, but I'll just tell you this one. Um, maybe we can help you a little. I can't remember the last. <laughs> the oldest brother of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur, his name was? Let me know. The oldest son of Bhakti Mirajak. That's the oldest son of Bhakti Mirajak. No, 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 no
is such an auspicious day, as Gurudev was saying, appearance day or disappearance day, to fix our minds on these most elevated personalities and to have the opportunity to speak about them and hear about them is very invigorating to the consciousness. And the pastimes of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj Prabhupada are so inspiring for all of us. His tremendous strength of character, his um, erudition, his, his scholarship in his writings will always elevate our consciousnesses. Just recently in the harmonics that was produced in Vrindavan, there's a, some very beautiful articles and I was reading one of them and then I decided to take notes on it and I was aware that every single word without exception was pertinent to what Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj was saying. So his um, writings as um, Rishikesh Maharaj was saying are very, very valuable to us all to become inspired and understand Guru Tattva, all Tattvas. We can get so much light from Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj. So there are so many pastimes and stories connected with his preaching. Um, I will just relate one or two very briefly. There's the um, wonderful example of when Srila Bhakti Prakyan Keshava Maharaj was in the mat, I think in Calcutta or Navadweep. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj had asked him to uh, take one boy out of the temple. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj had, there was one uh, devotee in the temple, he was a little obnoxious in his behavior. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj had said to this devotee, actually, you are the best devotee in the temple. And the devotee had sort of believed him that actually he was the best devotee in the temple, so he had become a little disturbed by that himself. And he was causing disturbance to the other devotees. So finally, after much difficulty, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, he asked Srila Bhakti Prakyan Kesha Maharaj to please, you take this boy's baggage and you ask him to leave the mat. So in that evening, Srila uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj had found that actually the boy was still in the mat and Srila uh, Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj was nowhere to be found and eventually they located Srila Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Maharaj and then he was brought before Srila Bhakti Siddhanta and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta asked him why you didn't take this boy away, I gave you instructions to do this. So Srila Bhakti Prakyan Kesha Maharaj, he said, because I know your heart is so soft that you are asking me to do this, but actually tomorrow you will be regretful of this, and you will, you only came here to help the conditioned Jeeves. So, he, knowing the inner mood of his Guru Maharaj, he didn't follow that instruction. So that's a small pastime of his. There's another pastime also in uh, Calcutta, just before he was about to leave his manifest pastime, there was a man who was in charge of running the mat, and he was a grihasta, and he was taking a lot of the funds from the collections and using them for his, his own livelihood. He had his son being nicely educated and so on. So the Mount devotees became very disturbed by this. And actually all the sannyasis headed up by Srila Sridhar Maharaj, they approached Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj and they said, we're very disturbed by this uh, devotee who is taking your funds. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj, he became angry with the sannyasis. He said, I am coming to give bhakti and this devotee is just taking this money 
and you are not feeling compassion for this devotee, for that is all he can see. All he can see is that he wants to take this material wealth. I'm giving the most divine trust level wealth. He's only taking this material wealth. You should all feel very compassionate for him and help him. So like this, he would see with such clarity and transcendental vision that he would teach by every example. Even apparently negative aspects, he would always very clearly uh, give his instructions. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj is always present with us. There's never a moment when he's absent, even though his manifest pastimes are concluded, but still he is completely uh, with us at every moment. And we can meditate so uh, much on many of his pastimes. So.
is space halasi virago is coming here krishna there's naturally affection and naturally raag attachment for krishna and they have so many they have too much absorbed for his service so if this kind of avishtata is there they call ragatmi just like i give you an example then you can understand if there is one glass and there is some color if you put the color you can take out the color very easily but if you melt the glass and put color then it will mix as a manner you cannot take it out by any so but any acid you cannot take it out so rag was there in soul of that who has too much affection for krishna that means that rajavasi so is the sarasi ki rag paramavishta da bhavet tanmayi ja bhavet bhakti satkare rag vikodita that in rajavasi has so much affection for krishna in their soul so they are called ragatmi who is eternal associates of krishna they are called ragatmi and ragatmi ka anushritta jaso ragan gochate he who want to follow ragatmi jan is seeing their activity towards krishna for hearing their activities service propensity for krishna if any sadak any devotional practitioner want to serve krishna same mood same way they call raganuga so mahaprabhu want to preach in this world rag marga bhakti that means how how we can adopt that raganuga bhakti mahaprabhu want to preach this thing so for sri bhakti sita sanskrit thakur he came in this world that krishna prasthana bhutale that means mahaprishna in form of mahaprabhu want to distribute raganuga marga rag marga bhakti sri saraswati thakur also came in this world to preach rag marga bhakti and is another pranam mantra sri varsha bhanavi devi doitaya kripaad dai krishna sambandh vigyan daine prabhave namaha oh i came to give us relationship with krishna Day before yesterday, during morning walk, Sri Ragunidev told about someone again who is Madhyam Kanista. He has relation. What kind of relation? See, the relation with Bhagavan and Jeev, relation with Bhagavan and Maya, relation with Jeev and Jeev, relation with Maya and Maya. So, so Sri Ragunidev told about the end to Jod and Jod and Jeev and Maya. is there in difference between jod and maya so J- same thing that jod manifestation of maya's potency this is called jod so what is different between two thing who kept came from that study what is there what is it is said that um, there's no difference maya between maya and jod what was the same thing yeah it is quite wrong Also, Maya is potency or power of Krishna. Power, yes. and it has been divided into two: Maha Maya and Jiva Maya. And the things which has been transferred from transferred from Maya is Chetan Archa. From Jiva Maya, Shruti Shakti coming.
So Prabhupada came in this world to distribute this kind of relationship? No. So what kind of relationship? Jeev is eternal servant of Krishna and he has some relationship in his constitutional, in his constitution form. Some are dasa that they think Krishna our master and I am his servant. It is called servitor mood. And Sokha, that Krishna is my friend. And Bhatsala Krishna is our son. And Madhur Krishna is of my beloved. This kind of relationship Prabhupada wants to give us, what want to preach us. So Krishna Sammandha Vigyana Dhaini Prabhavi Namo. Not only Sammandha. Prabhupada is so merciful, Kaswet merciful. Karunaya Vitra Vandeha. That Sammandha Vigyana. Vigyana means knowledge with, uh, with realization. So Prabhupada is so merciful. To whom you give this knowledge? The Sammandha Gyan. He was servant of Krishna. He make him understand and make him realize that what kind of servant he is. That means the disciples of Prabhupada who surrender themselves totally, they realize themselves the one kind of servant they are and he was. Prabhupada mercifully made them realize it also. Some part he has told. Part one that Srila Prabhupada has come not just to give um, not knowledge of ordinary relationships just as, has not come to give this not just that but he has come to give um, even more oh, it is quite wrong he has come in beginning this all knowledge these are some of the roots of all these the essence of all that's so both I told the Prabhupada not came only to distribute. Ah, it is still like this. I'm sorry, it's my fault. You are not sorry. I am also sorry. I understood like this. Now go on, next point. Madhurya Chala Premarga Srinupananga Bhakti Da Sri Gaura Karana Asakti Vigrahaya Namaskute Sri Sarasati Thakur Prabhupada He was the Gaura Sakti Sarupaya He was potency of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu And why he came to Rupananga Bhakti Da He wanted to distribute Rupananga Bhakti So what is Rupananga Bhakti? That Sri Krishna and his own incarnation They are all Vishnu Dattva Eternal associate of Vishnu Dattva, also Krishna, Krishna's eternal associates, they are called Agatmik Jan. He who wants to serve like them, they are called Raganuga. But he wants to serve Krishna like Swarup Goswami Pad, Seva Sadhaka Rupena Siddha Rupena Chattahi, in external form, like Rupa Goswami being eternal associate, he is serving like a, an ordinary sadhak, he wants to teach us, so he is acting like an ordinary sadhak and he is doing Sankha Purvaka Nama Gan, Nati Vi, this and by his inner mood, like if Vishumaru he is serving, he is serving divine couple in form of Rupa Manjali. So he wants to serve like Rupa Gasai Pad, like under guidance of Rupa Manjali he wants to serve divine couple. They are called Rupanuga. All the Rupanuga also Raganuga, but all Raganuga are not Rupanuga. Why? Because Rupanuga has one speciality that they want to serve under guidance of Rupamanjari. So, who is want to serve under guidance of Ragatmik John? They are Raganuga and Rupanuga is special. They are classification. That being Raganuga, 
they have a special category. They want to serve divine couple under guidance of Rupa Manjari. So they are Rupa Nuga. So Prabhupada, so Sastra came in this world, teach this, that we can desire to serve like under guidance of Rupa Manjari. And we are giving our identification that we are Gauriya Vaishnav. Now we are Gauriya Vaishnav. Srila so Prabhupada told, who is Gauriya? Srila so Prabhupada explained in uh, one his lecture that Gauriya means who want to serve divine couple being in Madhur Ras, in Kanta Ras, they are called Gauriya. Srila so Prabhupada in his advices, he told that we will not serve so many baby goddess. We have seen in scripture also, Alinganam Varangmane Velapartha Jalopasam, Nakatra Sarla Jukta Nam Nana Devaita Sevinam. Better we can embrace crocodile and tiger. Then what will happen? Then we see or die. So Prabhupada is telling, if we embrace crocodile or tiger, we, we may die. We see or die, it's no problem. Then we can spoil our own lifetime. But if we serve so many demigods, then so many lifetime will go, will spoil to come in Krishna consciousness being one point eight. So Prabhupada instruct us, don't to serve so many demigods and demigodes. So Prabhupada instruct us, being tolerant. Be tolerant, especially for Mathavasis who live in mud. They have to learn how to tolerate. Otherwise, we could not increase in Krishna consciousness. Increase in Krishna consciousness. In his other advice, Prabhupada told, our duty to serve Mathur Birahakata Rajavasi. What do you mean by Mathur Birahakata Rajavasi? When Krishna left Raj, he came to Mathura. Uproot bring brought him in Mathura. Then all Brajavasis, they are suffering so much for Krishna, they are lamenting for Krishna. Then Krishna came in Mathura. So we have to serve Brajavasis who are Mathur Virakada, that means who are lamenting for Krishna when Krishna came in Mathura. We have to serve Brajavasi who are lamenting for Krishna, that kind of Brajavasi have to serve Brajavasi. That means in this planet, who, are, who is sadhak, maybe Siddha and sadhak both, who was doing bhajan in this world and teaching us that being his eternal associate is acting like a sadhak and he is serving in mood of Brajavasi, we have to serve him. Then we can advance in Krishna consciousness. And Sri Prabhupada gave us so many advices. So, so many questions also here and we shall hear from Gurudev. And if you might, the poor knowledge of English, so which I misguide you, so please excuse me. Pancha Kalvataru Pashtra Vipas Hindu
towards animal conservation. <coughs> Okay. 